Welcome everybody to the Wayne Westland um, early college um, in information session. Again, there is a QR code if you could just grab a quick snap of that um, and fill out our form to help us stay in communication with you through the process of the next few months. That would be really helpful. Um, that QR code will show up again at the end of our presentation. So if you miss it right now, um, don't don't get stressed, we will recycle back, but I do want to get started so that we can um, stay true to our timeline that we promised you of a six o'clock start. Next slide, please, Ted. Well, first of all, I am Jacinda Samara and I am the director of the Wayne Westland Early College, and we are joined tonight by Ted Booker. He is um, the early college coordinator. He's new to Wayne Westland um, just in the last few months. We're very lucky to have him. Um, our social worker, Diane Back, who also supports the Wayne Westland Early College, has also joined us this evening. So what is early college? Early college is a five-year high school program um, that is basically delivered in conjunction or in partnership with a college or university. Our main partner at this point is Wayne County Community College District. So what does that mean, five years? It means that a student starts with us in um, ninth grade, 10th grade or 11th grade, um, and then they actually stay with early college in 12th grade and then have an additional year of high school. Um, that fifth year, however, is completely, almost completely at the university or the college. So even though they're still connected to Wayne Westland in that final year, they don't really come to see us. So they look just like any other college so um, freshman, except for they actually have sophomore status at that time. So students who are in the Wayne Westland early college earn simultaneously a high school diploma their industry certification, and an associate's degree or up to 60 college credits. Next slide, please, Ted. Um, there are multiple points for entry into the early college. Students can join and start in ninth grade, 10th grade, or 11th grade. That really depends on what makes the most sense for your family. Um, our kids are all unique. Our kids are all different. Um, and some of us, um, are ready to get going right in ninth grade. The transition to high school doesn't seem to be a challenge for your family um, and your student. Um, this is the right choice for your way, for what you believe to be right for your kid. Some of you want to see your kids mature a little bit more through that, those beginning years of high school and maybe want to wait until 11th grade. It's still an option for them all the way up and through through up through 11th grade and there's no pressure to, to, so there's no pressure to join in ninth grade. It's not like if you don't sign up in ninth grade, you don't have a chance. Um, as I said before, our main partner is Wayne County Community College District. Um, and what's really special about the opportunity that we um, have partnered with them is that we're working, we've worked our program of study, which Ted will go into more um, in a few moments, to really line to transfer agreement credits. So the courses that the kids take with us in the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade years are really these 30 classes of 30 college credits that transfer um, to pretty much every college in the, in the state of Michigan with no question as long as they have a C or higher. Um, I think there are a few colleges that require a B or higher, but um, for the most part, these college classes will transfer um, with, no, uh, with no restrictions to the 30 colleges that participate in the transfer agreement. That allows their senior year for the kids to really start, or their super senior year, their fifth year, to really start to explore what is it that I really want to do when I grow up? They, um, they'll have been mixing in their classes, especially in the 11th and 12th grade, with um, other adults, even at the other students from early college at other schools and adults at the community college, and hearing things that interest them. And so they will have the opportunity to take classes in those final years in. Um, arts and communications, business, tech, human services, health services, um, anything that really is appealing to them as a student. Next slide. So what are the benefits to you as a family um, and to the students that were served? Um, there are minimal costs for this program. Wayne Westland is covering in full um, tuition, fees, and books. Um, if you are a family that qualifies for free and reduced lunch, um, nutrition is also covered through that fifth year. So we would be still providing those breakfasts and lunches to your family in that fifth year if your student chose to um, 
participate in that. Um, it would look different. Obviously, you wouldn't be going through our cafeteria line, but we would definitely be providing, uh, you know, to-go boxes that students could pack for breakfast and lunch on that fifth year. And upon request, because this is so important to Dr. Digman, um, our superintendent, um, from the lens of equity and making this accessible to all, um, transportation is accessible to students in those higher level years. Uh, what's really nice is that we've been able, with our community college partner, to offer our ninth and 10th grade classes right on site at Wayne Westland Community School. So those classes are actually held at the William B. Ford Career Tech Center. The students get on the bus um, come to their comprehensive, they hop the bus from their comprehensive. If they're at Wayne Memorial, they hop the bus and come right with the career tech students. Um, or if they're at John Glenn, they just walk on over. So it's very, very easy for them to get to their classes. Uh, next slide. And this is where I'm going to turn it over to Ted. He is um, he is well versed in all that we're offering. Um, he is really working with our community college to uh, make our program of study stronger and better for our students. And I can't wait for him to share that with you. Thank you, Ms. Samara. So if you have any questions, uh, the chat has been disabled. So please hold your questions to the end. And, and if you can find the electronic raising your hand towards the end, we will, we will ask your, have you ask your questions at the very end. <laughs> okay, so... How does the schedule look for a ninth or 10th or 11th grader? Two college classes will be taken here at, in the, at this campus at Career Tech. And it happens to be the last two periods of the day next year. That's what we're planning for, fifth and sixth hour. And the, four, the first four hours are gonna be at either John Glenn or, Glenn or Wayne Memorial High. So <clears throat> it would basically look like math, English, science, social studies, the four core classes at the um, home high school, and then they would either ride a bus or over here from Wayne or John Glenn, they just walk over here for the last two hours. And it's just like any, any normal college, it would be a Monday, Wednesday class, and then the other one would be a Tuesday, Thursday class. On Fridays, we, we do things a little differently because college does not meet on Fridays. So we have a, what we call a success seminar for which they also get credit. And some of the things that we discuss, um, that, that's our staff. We, we discuss the kids with, with the kids, some things like a syllabus. Uh, how to use the syllabus to your advantage. Communication skills with teachers and professors and how to advocate for yourself. Academic success, studying, homework habits, self-care, time management, and the list goes on. Things that are important for college that <clears throat> ninth and 10th graders often have no clue about. So that's what we do on Fridays. And then we give them some free time to do some homework as well. We don't take up the, the entire hour, hour and a half. Now, regarding electives and advanced placement, if you're planning on doing four years of choir or four years of band or, or, or any kind of like drama, anything that, that you're just hoping to do for all four years, it might not work at the same time as this program. And simply the reason for it is there's no time in the schedule for those electives. All the electives are college classes. So it's basically you're trading your electives for college credits. That's, that's the decision that you're having to make, that we're asking you to make. So if you want the full experience with, I wanna try all the electives that my high school offers versus I want to just focus on college classes. That, that's, that's gonna be your decision or, or family decision. It just won't work both ways because there's just, as I mentioned, math, English, science, social studies, and then the two college classes. That's all there is time for in the day. The other question is that we sometimes get, it has to do with advanced placement classes, AP. Some students want to be ranked in the top 10. Maybe they're ranked one, number one or two, and they want to take all the AP classes because if they get an A in those classes, it'll give them five quality points with their grade point average, and it'll make them ranking, their ranking go higher. Well, these classes, college classes that currently are not ranked as five points, they're ranked as four points. So that means that you would drop a little bit in ranking. And also, 
also uh, AP classes. What if there's an AP class during the same period that you have to take your college class? You may not be able to take as many AP classes. So if, if it's your main goal, that I want to be ranked number one or two or three or way at the top 10, 10 then maybe this is not, not the, the, the best choice for you. This meaning uh, these college classes, early middle college. Again, that's a family decision. The next question has to do with waiting till 10th grade. Ms. Samara already mentioned a little bit about that is that Sometimes students need an extra year to mature before they, they're ready for college classes. And sometimes it takes two extra years. Um, we don't necessarily push all the current eighth graders to apply unless they're really ready for it as ninth graders. So please uh, think about it carefully if that's best for you and your student to start in ninth grade, then that's fine, then, then go ahead and apply. But if you think the extra year of maturity would be emotional and academic maturity would be helpful, then wait another year before applying. At least that's our suggestion. It's still your decision as a family. The sample schedule that we have up here on the screen, it shows somebody coming in in 10th grade into the early middle college. That means that they have two hours at the, two college classes here at the end of the day, and then the first four hours are at the high school. As a junior, it would look the same way. Same thing, it really looks the same. This particular student is coming in not in ninth grade, so they're doing all high school classes all day long. But if you do start as a ninth grader, it'll look exactly like the 10th and 11th grade, same way. As a senior, there should be more flexibility in your schedule to be able to take more college classes and less high school classes because usually science is done, depends on what you've taken in eighth grade. You may have more things done like foreign language may be done. You may have started algebra one in eighth grade, therefore you're, you're done in with math earlier. So it, it all depends, it all depends. So this is a flex, a flex year, the 12th grade. The fifth year, or as we've seen recently called superior year, uh, is supposed to be all college, all at the college. It could be Schoolcraft College, it could be Lawrence Tech, it could be, uh, right, right now it's uh, WCCCD, Wayne Westland Community College District. That's the one that we have the, the, the agreement for. And this is what the agreement looks like for the incoming group that starts next fall. Now, the layout did not allow all the cl classes to show. So I'm gonna see if maybe we can go to this link. Yep, let's go here and show the whole thing. So it doesn't matter what grade you're in next year, whether it's ninth or 10th or 11th, they'll all be taking the same classes at the same time. Now, it, so it would look like this. When you first come in, you would be doing speech or communications, and then a technical writing English class the first semester. So you get six college credits. The second semester, spring would be actually college English and intro to psychology. Second year, the second semester, well, they said the advanced English, and then this would be a visual arts class. Then intro to sociology, biology with lab. This one would be at the college and chemistry would also be at the college there the next year and political science. This is a government class Then economics and then world civilization and the 13th grade. So philosophy, economics, computer information system, college algebra and so on. So what's, what's it look like if you're a ninth grader? Same thing. All you do is you trade this, you put ninth grade there, 10th grade there, 11th grade here, and then this would be the 12th grade. So what do you do your 13th grade? That's when you take all, a whole bunch of electives that would be suitable to your associate's degree, your focus or whatever you wanna do. So that's how it would look for those starting as a ninth grader. Well, how about a junior? For juniors, it's a little different because they don't have this many years that they're, they're gonna run out of time. So 
in order to get close to getting associates, possibly even finishing the associates, if you start as a junior, we offer you the opportunity to take college classes in the summer after your 11th grade and also after your 12th grade to help you get closer to the associates. Now, some people can do it so they can finish their associates, even if they start as a junior, and some people will get close, um, maybe not quite finishing it, and then maybe um, almost getting the associates, and then maybe going one more semester after, after high school graduation to finish up, or even two semesters. It all depends on how much you get done. I hope that makes sense. And if you have questions about it towards the end, we can go back to this page. The application process is really not that uh, lengthy. It takes maybe about 15 minutes. There's a short essay asking why you're, why you're interested in this. It also asks, of course, your basic information. And I'll, I'll show you a screenshot of that. We ask for two recommendation letters from two different people, preferably teachers that you've had in the past or currently are, have right now. And an interview process is also part of, that, part of this. So this little thumbprint, a thumbnail, we're going to enlarge it. This is the first screen. It simply shows how it starts off, your email, your first name, last name, real simple stuff, not very complicated. The application timeline, we've already opened the window up. We already have some applicants. It um, opened in Halloween day and it's gonna end Valentine's day. So we still have some time, but don't, don't wait too long. <clears throat> we hope to have the decisions made by March 20th. That's our goal. And then after that March 20th, sometime probably in April, we're hoping, we hope to, take all those who were accepted into the program to the college to do AccuPlacer testing, testing the English reading and English writing abilities and see what the le your levels are and also get college ID badges at the same, same day, same trip and take a sack lunch and eat it there and just get a little bit of a college experience. And uh, the week before school starts, we hope to have sort of a boot camp where we give you some basic information of what to expect at, for co with college classes. <clears throat> so our website, this is a QR code for our website and this is our email address. Um, for me, this is partially covered up. Is it covered up for you just in this? No, okay. So they can take a screenshot or, or, or take a picture of this, and it's a link to our website, which will bring you to frequently asked questions, the application itself, recommendations, the link to recommendations. So I'm going to actually show you that page. <clears throat> there she is. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> here's the, here's the web page. That's where it's going to take you to. Right here is the link to the early college frequently asked questions. Right here are the, is the application form. Just click on it real quick, see what happens. Well, it looked just like it did on the other page, right? And we go back to there. The recommendation form looks very similar. And that's where you, you should know the email address of the person that you want to recommend you your name, their name, and so on. All that is being asked and uh, a fair evaluation of you. And that is, that is our website. So. Um, one thing I do want to add because um, Wayne County Community College District wasn't able to be with us tonight is that these are college classes. Um, and that means that it is their curriculum. And while we can accommodate um, and uh, we can work with students who have IEPs and 504s and all of those kind of things. We are not able to modify the curriculum. So there is sometimes very adult content in some of these classes, especially if you get into a sociology or psychology class, because they are discussing real world um, 
things, if they're in pol political science, they're discussing d the decisions that um, the government is making. Um, and we're, able, we're not able to push back on that. They get the same content that the kids at University of Michigan Dearborn, because of the Michigan Transfer Agreement, the courses are all held to the same level. So these are these kids are being delivered the same content as kids at University of Michigan Dearborn, at Western Michigan, at Eastern Michigan. Um, and so that that transfer agreement stays strong, we can't modify that. So if you as a family have concerns about the age at which a child, your child starts to, or your student starts to get in, in, in um, you know, interested in some of these topics, um, it is something for you to think about in true transparency um, because they are kids and, um, mm. you know, there's, there's a lot of feeling on how you should raise kids, lots of different perspectives on how you should raise your family and your children. Um, so I did want to be truly transparent about that. Um, Thank you for joining us. We hope to hear from you soon. You will be hearing from us soon um, as we continue to share information about um, the Wayne Westland Early College, and I hope that everybody has a really great night. Thank you for coming.